Hey Kim, when I'm buying a home, what exactly stays with the home? Or if I'm selling, what can I take with me or what do I have to leave? You know what, these are great questions. Let's talk about it. Hi everyone, Sean and Kim Christopher here. It's good to see you again. Hey, how you going? Today's real estate tip is something that really needs the attention of both the buyer and the seller, fixtures and fittings. It's easy as both a buyer and seller to get caught up in negotiations focusing solely on price. The problem is there's many elements to a standard contract. You really cannot ignore the details. It's these peripheral elements that can have an impact later on. Today we're going to talk about one of these elements being fixtures and fittings. That's right. But before we start, we should note that we are talking about real estate in Queensland and about the contracts which tend to be used most widely, those being the Queensland Law Society contract for houses and residential land, in particular the 16th edition, my personal favourite. Page 7, subsection V in the definition notes. Improvement means fixed structures on the land and includes all items fixed to them, such as stoves, hot water systems, fixed carpets and curtains, blinds and their fittings, clotheslines, satellite dishes, television antenna, in-ground plants, but does not include reserved items. Wow. So put simply, the contract is sales for the land and the fixed structure on it, for example, the house. Now, any items fixed to the structure are also included and they gave some specific examples. I guess the easiest way to look at it is anything fixed is anything, say, bolted down, stuck, glued, nailed, rooted in, concreted in. Look, that all sounds pretty straightforward. It does, but this is where it can get messy. Let's use a simple example of a picture hanging on the wall. The hook is probably regarded as a fixture, but the picture isn't, as it's not fixed, you can lift it off. Okay, but what about a dishwasher? It is no more fixed than a washing machine, and buyers would expect the dishwasher to stay, but they wouldn't expect your washing machine to stay. Whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? I'm taking the dishwasher. I don't think we can. I think that has to stay. Are you sure? I don't know. Can you put those air conditioners back? Or even consider pool equipment. Again, people would expect the equipment to stay, but is it fixed? Probably not. To help with this, there's a section in the contracts on page three, which notes excluded fixtures and included chattels. Now, excluded fixtures are just that. Fixtures the owner is not including in the sale. For example, let's say the homeowner has installed a chandelier, which is a family heirloom, which of course they wish to take when they, when they leave. As it is fixed, they need to note it as an excluded fixture so the prospective buyer is aware of this before offering, as it may affect their offer. If it is not noted in the contract, it will be considered as part of the sale. And this is very important for sellers to take into consideration. It is vital the offer documents and contracts be very clear. Let's go back to that pool equipment. It isn't a fixture, but it should stay, right? Well, look, again, you need to be clear. If a non-fixed item is to stay and be part of the sale, it needs to be noted in the included chattel section. That way it is very clear to all the parties as to what stays and what doesn't. And we believe it's also very important to be as specific as possible. Again, if we take the example of the pool equipment, just noting pool equipment can leave things too open. And if you're unsure, note it in the contract. Does the shed stay? Probably. But if it's unclear or could even be argued either way, note it in the chattel section that way it is now very clear. Now, please keep in mind, we are not legal professionals, so if you are unsure, seek your own independent legal advice. But what we do want to do here is highlight that there is always more to contracts than just the price. It is vital for both the sellers and the buyers to consider these documents in greater depth. So we hope this has helped and maybe opened your eyes to considering the contract and sale process in more depth than just price. If you would like to get in touch with us, put a comment below or reach out to us on any of our social media channels. We'll be uploading a video every week, so make sure that you subscribe to this channel so you can see those. Absolutely. Sounds like a plan, Kim. We'll see you soon. See you later. Bye-bye. Slides coming down this way, swim up. Oh, this is awesome. It's going to make us a fortune. Don't overcapitalize. This is why we suggest the one to three ratio rule. Quite simply, 